Today I'm going to um, explain again how to do some different things using fractions, but this time it will be um, sent through the video so that there won't be any issues about things being out of focus or going too quickly or internet issues because it can be watched, watched again, paused, go back and you get a lot more information from this. OK, so. Here's fraction 20 over 90. Now, if we had um, one whole one, we could split it into 90 pieces and then they would be 90th. And then if we shaded in 20 of them, we would have 20 90th. But instead, instead of splitting that whole one into 90 equal pieces, we split it into nine equal pieces. Then what would be, how many pieces would be shaded in for it to be equal? And the way we do that is we think, well, how do you get from 90 to nine? And you get there by dividing by 10. And if you do the same to the top, you get two. So this is equivalent to having a whole one split into nine pieces and two of them shaded in. What if we wanted eight pieces shaded in? Two to eight. We have to times by four. And we do the same here. So times by four. It would have to be in 36 pieces and eight of them would be shaded in to have the same amount. So eight over 36 is the same as two over nine is the same as 20 over 90. Then you might be told what to do and to find the whole equivalent fraction. So this is telling me to divide by two. I get four, I get 18, and it's an equivalent fraction. And one last one I do, I could times, I could get 40 over 180. Now, two important points. First point is you can only times and divide to find equivalent fractions. You can't add and subtract. You have to do the same to the top as you do to the bottom. So if I divide by 10 on the bottom, I have to divide by 10 on the top. And the other important thing is that this one here, this 2 over 9, that is what's called simplest terms. If you have to simplify a fraction fully or find a fraction in its simplest terms or write a fraction in its simplest terms, then it's basically asking you, what's the smallest numbers we can get? We can't go into decimals and things. We can't halve it and get 1 over 4.5. Because there's no common factors between 2 and 9, that's as simple as it gets. OK, so the next thing we're going to look at is improper fractions. So 17 fifths, if I have whole ones split into fifths, if I have three lots of these whole ones, and a couple more, there you can see I've got 17 fifths. And that is equivalent to, I've got three whole ones, and I've got two little pieces left, so two fifths. Right, so this is an improper fraction, and this is a mixed number. Improper fraction is where the numerator is bigger than the denominator, and a mixed number is when you've got partly whole numbers and partly fractions. So you don't have to draw them out every single time. So Instead, what you can do is you can do how many fives go into 17? And there's three remainder two. So there's your whole ones. There's your numerator. And there's your denominator. 
which means 17 over 5, whole number, numerator, denominator. And if I want to go backwards, if I want to turn a mixed number into an improper fraction, I have to multiply and then add, which means I'm going to be doing 5 times 3 plus 2. 17. So 17 over 5. And the last thing I'm going to look at today is which is bigger, 5 sixths or 7 tenths. And in order to figure it out, because even though this seems like, well, it's all but one, this is more pieces are right. So, you know, which is, which is more. And the only way to tell for sure is to find equivalent fractions. So five sixths and seven tenths. We've got to write as equivalent fractions using the skill we did at the top, but we're not being told what to do and we're not being told what any of the numbers are. We've got to find a common number. So a number that's 10 and 6 both go into. And that number would be 30. It's the lowest common multiple of 10 and 6. In this instance, I have to times by 5 to get 25 on the top. In this instance, I'd have to times by 3 to get 21 on the top. So that's how I know 7 tenths is smaller because it's only 21 out of 30, and 5 6 is bigger because it's 25 out of 30. So there's the three skills I'm hoping you take away from this. Equivalent fractions, including simple as four, converting between mixed numbers and improper fractions, and comparing the size of fractions. So hopefully this has been helpful because you can pause it, go back over it, think about it, and look at it as many times as you need to. So that is everything for today.